Hey, what's up turtles? Crick here. Really excited to share a new multi-tool with you today. And it is the Boker Plus Tech Tool 7. This is the number seven and there are one through seven numbered of these tech tools. I'm not a huge fan of the way they went about naming these, numbering these. I understand why, but either way, this is the number seven. We're gonna, sh I'll show you all the tools that are in this and actually Booker sent this over to us, so I want to thank them first of all. And this is a new offering from them, and I am really excited about this. It's going online for around a little bit more than $40 US, and this is the green version, so this is considered the outdoor. The black scales, they're calling that the city. But let's start looking at the tools. First obvious thing you've seen that I've noticed, look at that, that's a pocket clip, and you can reverse it only on one side, but there's a pocket clip on a little multi-tool like this. And the clip itself, it's nothing you can see, but you have to take my word for it that it's a really nice sturdy clip. It is, I'm really impressed with it. Take a look and see how it rides in the pocket. Pretty low. And this is kind of thick, you know, all things being considered might be able to see from the top how much that's pushing out off of my leg. I probably won't carry this model, the 7, in my pocket just because of, you know, everyday carry that's kind of bulky. But you have the option, and that's pretty cool. The first tool I'm going to cover is right here. A little lanyard hole. Kind of cool, right? Now, right here. Flat head right here wire strippers and use in conjunction with the blade if you could. Bottle cap opener, bottle opener. Pretty standard tool. Nice thickness on all these tools. I will show a comparison with the Victorinox I brought out with me that I use a lot. So stick around if you want to see that. Next tool is sort of serrated blade that only stays at this 45 degree angle. There's a small flat head right there. And to me, this is sort of like a, almost a rescue tool. If you've seen the rescue blades that people carry, they don't want a sharp tip. If you have to go in somewhere and cut a strap or seat belt or something like that, obviously you don't want to poke anyone. So that's how I see this tool. They're just calling it a serrated, serrated curved blade, but there it is. Next on from that is the scissors. Scissors. I know some people really like scissors, want to see them. Other people are like, I got a knife. What's the point of using scissors? I think they're really cool. I really like having scissors on a multi-tool. And I'm really happy this number seven has it. I really do like the features of this tool. I'm going to get into that more towards the end. And another favorite multi-tool tool of mine is a wood saw. Really big aggressive teeth on that. We'll use the saw too. Moving on, we've got the blade. This is actually Swedish Sandvik for this blade. 12C27, that's kind of cool. You can see the 12C27 right there. It's a hollow ground blade, about two and three quarter inches long. I wasn't, okay, it came sharp. I'm not gonna say it didn't, but I feel like I have had Victorinoxes that were just a hair sharper. And when I start using the blade, I'll talk about how I came to that conclusion of why it wasn't quite as sharp as I thought it should have been. Or could have been, excuse me. Could have been. Moving on to the back tools. Corkscrew. <laughs> I actually put a picture of this up online, and people had opinions about this corkscrew, whether it should be there or not. I've used corkscrews before. I've drank wine in camping, backcountry setting as well. Something I use all the time? No. Would I like to see probably Phillips there instead? Yeah, but... There's a corkscrew. And last tool on the back is a reamer or awl. And it's a sharp, there's a sharpened edge on this one. It's not just a straight punching through, you can actually cut with it. And maybe I'll show that on some wood at the end. And there's a hole in there too for stitching. And last tool on here, not least, right there. Little, gra little glass breaker, excuse me. That's something I haven't really seen before on multi-tools like this. That's kind of cool too. All right, but let's start using some of this. 
So I've used the knife, but I haven't used the saw yet. So this is gonna be my first test with it and we'll, we'll see how I feel about it. I can't imagine it's gonna be bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll cut right there. This is tool poplar. It's a really soft wood, too. Very soft wood. Yeah, just as I thought. It's sawing pretty well. Pretty clean saw cut, right? Not too bad. What do you think about sawing down through there like that? I try it? Yeah, let's try it. That's what I was getting after. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I did this too, this uh, little saw down on the end grain with the Victorinox video, but could come in handy. Saw works well. What I expected. Uh, yeah, let me get the uh, let me get the blade out now. Like I said before, the only tool I really tested on this so far was the knife, and it came sharp. But I tried doing some feather sticks with it, and I just didn't have the control as I'd want um, with the sharpness of blade. So I've stropped this. That's all I've done. And this is going to be the first time since I've stropped it to see if it's feather sticking better. Let's see. A little knot right there. I'm going really light because it's a hollow ground blade. I haven't really used it, so I just kind of want to. I'm just gauging to see the blade geometry angle. You know how it goes using a blade for the first time. Whoops, let me stop talking. Okay, so it's doing a lot, much, much better job than straight out of the box. Like I said, it was sharp, but all I did was take it on my strop, you know, maybe, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 passers per side of the blade on my strop with some compound. And yeah, that's right where I want it really comfortable to hold too. Pocket clip really isn't causing any discomfort. Can't even really tell it's there honestly. Some nice light curls. Spine on the blade is not sharp to a 90 degree but uh, on the saw it's sharp enough to, to throw some sparks if you need to. Having so much fun with that newly strop blade that I was going to keep using it. It's kind of fun today. A little notch. Why not? Oh, so much, so much nicer now using it. Just as I stropped it just that little bit, it's so much more of a pleasure to use. I swear I'm almost done using the knife. <laughs> Get the reamer all out, put a hole in this wood, and call good. All right, calling that good. All right, that's good. I got this little reamer all out. Doing it standing up too is not the probably easiest way to do it. Oh yeah, she's biting good. It's like I started to come through on the other side. I'm gonna flip it around and finish it from the other direction. So that car to come through a little bit. Yahtzee.
There's a hole in there. <laughs> cool. Works well. All right, for a quick comparison, size-wise, this is the Fieldmaster. I've done a video on this. This is my EDC it carried on my belt in a pouch I made, just for a quick comparison. I think I'm going to do a video, an actual comparison side-by-side, -side, go through it, sort of a versus video. Really similar, guys and gals. Really similar sizes. There is actually one thing I do want to make mention of, and that's the thickness. Basically, all the tools on the Boker Plus are thicker than the Victorinox. And I'll get the blade out just because. There's one blade. Get the big blade out on this. You can see, just the Boker is just thicker. And like I said, that's just the theme. The tools are just a little bit thicker on the tech tool than the Victorinoxes. Victorinoxes. I really just like these tech tools. I mentioned earlier, this is the outdoor model, and this is the green G10 scales versus the black, what they call the city. So this is G10, and it's just something I haven't seen before on a, on a multi-tool. And just the way this is designed, the aesthetics, the, the tools, you know, it's a multi-tool with a lot of similar tools going off of Victorinox and SAK, but there's a heft to it too. I think this is six ounces, weighs six ounces. And there's just a heft to it. It just feels really solid. The tools, the detent, they just snap right in. And yeah, this is made in China, okay? I know people are probably curious about that. Boker Plus, it's either China, Taiwan, or Italy. This is made in China. And if it turns you off, I understand that. But the quality I've seen from this, if you're looking for quality or you're worried about the quality maybe lacking because it's coming from China, I can tell you there's no lack in quality with these tools. Super, super impressed with these. New favorite, just gadget. Definitely a new favorite gadget. So let me know what you think about this, these tech tools. Like I said, there's one through seven different amounts of tools on them. Let me know what you think. I'm really curious, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts about how maybe this is going to start rivaling, rivaling and challenging the Victorinox uh, models. I don't know, just really cool gadget. So until next time, this is Crick with Blackout. Later, Turtles.